Who here has heard of Michael Knowles? Michael Knowles is part of the, I don't know what to call them, the Daily Wire Mafia? The, the old timers? I don't know. But uh, the reason why you can tell, and I say this every time because it's so true, is that every single Daily Wire ripoff will have like this kind of, this exact setup, like a monitor, the microphone here, the mandatory leftist tear mugs, some like old timey kind of vibe going on behind. The multiple camera angles is also, do they just have this? Is this just, <laughs> just is most of the video? Interesting. The multiple camera angles, like the side views and everything. That's how you know they're part of the data. And then there is also the Daily Wire watermark here. But let's just ignore that for the moment. But this time, it's not actually about a video uh, that Michael Knowles made. This time, it's about some tweets. So there was some, believe it or not, discourse on Twitter where Republicans were talking about Reaganism and those types of, you know, ideas and, uh, you know, like old-timey Republican things in the age of McCarthyism and in the 50s, 60s, Red Scare type era or whatever. And we have some, you know, tweets and stuff like this. Here is like the, the initial thing, okay? So we got some small things, you know, you have a 74-like tweet and it responds to this one and basically people are saying that, no, the Republican Party must go back to Reaganism and that type of era of conservative discourse and policy platform in order to be successful. And then we have Michael Knowles, who decides to, you know, elevate this discussion of strategy that, I mean, I don't really know strategy, I guess, to, uh, it's not so much that we need to move on from Reagan and Buckley, as we need to remember what they actually believed. McCarthyism is awesome. Academic freedom is a hoax. Government should promote virtue, etc. over the misrepresentations of the squish libs who invoke them. So we get a bit of, uh, it, it's funny because this is supposed to be like the, the, the party of like free speech and, you know, integrity and stuff like that. And we have the whole McCarthyism here, the academic freedom is a hoax, which this is a, a big red flag. If you guys have ever seen it, uh, anti-intellectualism is a hallmark of, um, more like authoritarian like ideologies and stuff like that. Uh, trying to crack down on academic freedom and stuff like that, it's not good. It's not something that's beneficial. Academic freedom is a core principle that we should seek to, you know, maintain and aspire to uh, in society as a whole in order to retain an open and free democracy. And the fact that, you know, Michael Knowles here is saying stuff like academic freedom is a hoax, not great. But guess what? Doesn't get worse. What is McCarthyism? Excellent question. So McCarthyism, named after, I believe, a senator called McCarthy, what was his first name? Um, Joseph McCarthy, which was kind of like, it was like the, the internal and the domestic front to the Red Scare. The Red Scare being massive propaganda campaigns that were done during the Cold War in order to um, get people away from and hate the ideas of socialism and communism and the rest of it. Uh, and McCarthyism specifically referred to people being like locked up or prosecuted often for treason on account of holding like left-leaning beliefs and maybe being a communist or being a socialist and stuff like that. Now, there is an excellent movie on this that I watched a while back. Uh, I think it's called Trumbo Movie. Um, yeah, Trumbo, which is the story of a, I think he's a socialist or communist filmmaker, uh, Trumbo, I don't remember what his first name was exactly, and his experience is based on a real story with McCarthyism and the American, you know, government and the things that were going on there when it comes to the prosecution against, you know, like more left-leaning individuals uh, at the given time. But we can go through and we can read the, you know, the, you know, easy Wikipedia things for the McCarthyism thing to make sure that, uh, you know, we all are on the same page. So, McCarthyism is the practice of making accusations of subversion or treason, especially when related to communism and socialism. The term originally referred to the controversial practices and policy of U.S. Senator Joseph McCarthy, Republican from Wisconsin, and has its origin in the period in the United States known as the Second Red Scare, lasting from the late 1940s to the 1950s. It was characterized by heightened political repression and persecution of left-wing individuals and a campaign spreading fear of alleged communist and socialist influence on American institutions and of espionage by Soviet agents. 
After the mid-1950s, McCarthyism began to decline, mainly due to Joseph McCarthy's gradual loss of public popularity and credibility after several of his accusations were found to be false and sustained opposition from the U.S. Supreme Court led by Chief Justice Earl Warren on human rights ground. The Warren Court made a series of rulings on civil and political rights that overturned several McCarthyist laws and directives and helped bring an end to McCarthyism. So it's basically a period of prosecution for uh, like left-leaning people and uh, yeah, left-leaning individuals, communists and socialists there. And let's not, you know, cut corners here or anything. This is a blatant violation of the First Amendment. And that's why the Supreme Court, you know, ruled as they did in the end. And that's why we got an end to McCarthyism. Um, because at the end of the day, um, what this effectively is, is you're prosecuting someone, you're prosecuting someone for treason, for holding a set of like economic beliefs at the time, you know, socialism and communism and just general left-leaning beliefs at the moment or at the time. And uh, yeah, not really great for the party of constitutionalism and the party of the first amendment and the you know big on the constitutional rights and everything and somebody confronted um you know uh michael knows on this and said this in what possible world is mccarthyism awesome trampling the first amendment is awesome a middleman what the fuck did i just say trampling the first amendment is awesome uh america first really led to some weird contradictory places and then Michael Knowles bites a big ass bullet. <laughs> there is no First Amendment right to be a commie. Wowie. Just to be very clear, we can we can look up America First Amendment. The First Amendment provides that Congress makes no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press, assembly, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The Second Amendment gives the citizens the right to bear arms. So the First Amendment is meant to prevent the government from encroaching on your speech and on your beliefs. You do not get prosecuted solely for having a certain belief in the United States, according to the First Amendment. That's not how that's supposed to work. Uh, you're supposed to be able to talk about speech freely when it comes to discussions of, you know, like economic matters like communism or socialism or whatever. And the First Amendment should have anything to do with that, but uh, or should protect that. Sorry, not fight against that. And uh, Michael Mills provides some evidence, though. Wow. Very cool. So there's no First Amendment right to be a commie. For those of you who don't believe me, and he links the Smith Act. Damn. Maybe he has some facts. Let's check this out. <clears throat> the Alien Registration Act, probably known as the Smith Act, was uh, the numbers, whatever the fuck, is a United States federal statute that was enacted on June 28, 1940. It said criminal penalties for advocating the overthrow of the U.S. government by force or violence and requires all non-citizens adults to register with the federal government. Approximately 215 people were indicted under the legislation, including alleged communists, anarchists, and fascists. Prosecutions under the Smith Act continued until a series of U.S. Supreme Court decisions in 1957 reversed the number of convictions under the act as being unconstitutional. The law has been amended several times. Damn! Good one, Michael Knowles. You literally link a law that was reversed and was amendment on account of the fact that it did violate the first amendment so i don't know what to say at this point i like they're providing you the evidence you need to debunk yourself i i don't know what's going on i i legitimately i i have no idea what even is politics anymore <laughs> <laughs> like, how is he not going to read the basic, like, introduction to what he's talking about? He's going to claim that the First Amendment right doesn't protect you from, you know, from being like a communist or whatever. And then he links a law that was repealed because the thing that the law was targeting is actually prevented or is protected by the, the First Amendment. Wow. <laughs> Good one, Michael. Really strong one there. But let's remember here, okay, that... So many of the conservatives and so many people overall in the political spectrum, they tout all these things because it sounds good. Oh, I'm a patriot. I'm a big fan of the American Constitution. I'm a big First Amendment fac uh, fan. I think that, you know, the current, you know, liberals or whatever, they're encroaching on our Constitution, on our First Amendment, and it's terrible and it's horrible or whatever. And they play up this card over and over and over again. But they don't actually care. 
they have no idea. They have no idea what the First Amendment is. They have no idea what it protects. They have no idea what the laws and how the First Amendment has affected given laws and given practices, especially laws that they themselves link in support of their argument. They are explicitly in favor of practices that have historically and legally been seen as violations of these constitutional rights that they, you know, put up on a pedestal and see, this is what we support, you know, as a party. This is what's important to us. And it's, it's ridiculous. And then there's just the fact that, like, what does this say about, not necessarily the intellectual honesty, but just the, the competence of people working in the Daily Wire, for instance, the competency of Michael Knowles, where he will literally link something to support his argument. And in like the second paragraph, before the table of contents even shows up, it directly contradicts the point that he's making here. Um, I don't know what to say. I guess Michael Knowles is having a big, massive bra moment over here. But the more worrying thing is how it really demonstrates that people like Michael Knowles, they only pay lip service to these constitutional rights, to, you know, human rights, to freedom of expression, to, you know, um, I, I mean, academic freedom, he said, is a hoax, which I don't even know what this means, but this is some scary shit for the party that's supposed to be against, like, you know, government tyranny and stuff like that. This is some scary shit. They only do it to play lip service to it because they think it garners them popularity. But when it comes to actually saying what they believe in and what they want to do, they throw that shit out the window so quick if they think it benefits them. The party of small government, the party of the constitution, people that support McCarthyism, that don't think we should have academic freedom. Are these the party of small government? Are these the party of the constitution? Is this the party of the first amendment? I don't think so. And I don't think you should think that either. Michael Knowles is just as silly and also just as scary as you expect him to be. And this isn't, this isn't like fringe conservative discourse anymore. I made a video a while back on Candace Owens and the things that she was saying about Australia. How she was like, you know, oh, you know, maybe we should, you know, invade Australia because like this is kind of how Hitler did his thing, you know, with the with the lockdowns and everything. Like, I'm not kidding. If you've seen that video, go check it out. But Candace Owens literally compares the actions of the Australian government doing lockdowns to authoritarian leaders and dictators throughout history. Even contemporary ones. She makes a reference and a comparison between the Australian government and the fucking Taliban. And these aren't fringe conservative figures anymore. These aren't the Alex Joneses. These aren't the Richard Spencers. These are Michael Knowles working for probably, I would say, that one of the most, apart from Fox News maybe, but one of the most famous um, conservative networks, The Daily Wire. Then you have Candace Owens who also works for The Daily Wire. Unironically, Ben Shapiro is probably one of the, the most left-leaning and most reasonable people in The Daily Wire. And that should scare you because the others are people like Michael Knowles and people like Candace Owens who say stuff like this, draw ridiculous comparisons and don't even have the like intellectual skill or the media wherewithal or whatever to read the first two paragraphs of something that they link to support their point. I, I don't know what to tell you. I guess it's just bra moment from Michael Knowles here.